This video is how to trade crypto on PancakeSwap. I'm gonna walk you through the whole entire process of connecting a wallet, which blockchains to use with PancakeSwap, and then trading tokens and paying gas on these networks. I'll leave timestamps for everything below as well. Firstly, we can come to pancakeswap.finance. That's the official URL. Make sure you go through to this one. I'll link them at the top of the description as well. So if you want to make sure you're going through to this website, pancakeswap.finance, there may be phishing sites uh, and fake sites out there. So don't go to the wrong one. Connect wallet. That's the first thing we need to do. We're going to click this and now we need a blockchain wallet. So if you don't have a blockchain wallet at all, and you've never used a blockchain before, which wallet should you use? That depends on whether you're using a browser or a smartphone. I'll show you both right here um, so you can see the options. So if you don't have a wallet yet and you're using a browser, what should you download? Metamask is the ubiquitous kind of industry standard that people use, but there are many other good wallets out there. Trust Wallet has a browser wallet. Coinbase Wallet has a browser wallet as well. These are very good. Um, it's going to depend on which other service that you're using, but all of these wallets are going to support EVM style chains, which all of these are. So BNB Smart Chain, Ethereum, Polygon, Arbitrum, these are all EVM chains. And so these wallets are gonna support all of these networks. If you don't have a wallet yet, I'll leave beginner's guides and tutorials down below step-by-step -step on setting them up. For example, Trust Wallet, also Metamask. If you wanna know how to set them up, I'll leave it for those videos. For right here, I'll just show you how to connect these wallets. So if you want to connect a browser wallet, what you can do is choose the wallet that you have. So I'm going to uh, connect Trust Wallet right here and it says, you don't have Trust Wallet installed. Do you want to install it? I can do that. If I have a wallet installed, you can see MetaMask right here. I have that wallet installed on my browser and so it's connected automatically for me. You can see that right up here. What I'm gonna do is disconnect this and then go to Connect Wallet again. What happens if you have a wallet on a phone like Trust Wallet? A lot of people have this. What you can do is press Trust Wallet right here and it says you don't have this connected, scan the QR code. So we're gonna go over to our uh, smartphone and we're going to connect. So what I'm gonna do right here is just scan the QR code like this and it's gonna scan and it's using something called Wallet Connect. Wallet Connect allows me to essentially connect my phone wallet to anything else via a QR code. Which wallet do you want to um, connect right here? You can see all of the different chains that are supported. So choose the chain that you want to connect. And then down here, it says connect. Press that, your phone is now connected to PancakeSwap. So you can do that uh, this way as well. Now, the other way to do it, if you have a phone, is just in your Trust Wallet or your Coinbase Wallet, go to the browser in your app. So press browser, and then up here at the top, write in pancakeswap.finance, right? So you can do that and it will take you through to the app. From there, you see this application just in your smartphone browser wallet. And so you can connect directly from your phone. So they're the different ways you can connect. Once your wallet is connected to the app, you can then go ahead and trade crypto. I've connected my MetaMask wallet right here just to show you, and I'm on the browser here, but it's exactly the same for the phone app as well. Now we need to choose which network that we actually wanna use with PancakeSwap, and I've got BNB Smart Chain right here. Now, if you're using a browser, you can connect to any of these sites. If you're using MetaMask, what you can do is just click one of these, like this, and it's gonna switch the network in your wallet. It says to me, do you wanna switch the network? I can press this right here. I'm gonna press cancel, but if you don't have one of these uh, blockchains connected that you want to use. You can click any of them. If it's not added to your MetaMask yet, it's just gonna go through and say, do you want to add this network? Press yes. And then you've added that network to your MetaMask and you can go ahead and use that with this application. From here, we have to know which network that we want to use and trade on because every time we trade, we're gonna have to pay a gas fee to the network. So we need to know which coin we need to pay for gas on that network. If you're using BNB Smart Chain, you have to use BNB Coin. So you're gonna to need to buy some BNB Coin initially and then get that in your wallet in order to trade and pay gas fees. If you're using Ethereum, you need ETH, Polygon ZK EVM, ZK Sync, Arbitrum, Linear, Base, OP BNB, all of those use ETH as the gas token. You wanna to make sure you're 100% correct 
and know which token that you need to pay for gas because you need to buy that and get that in your wallet to pay for gas fees. So just go ahead and check that before using any network. For BNB Smart Chain, I'm gonna use BNB Coin. So what I need to do is get some BNB Coin into my wallet. So I'm gonna bring up my MetaMask wallet right here and I'm gonna go ahead and get some BNB Coin into that. You can see I've got some already in my wallet. How to buy BNB Coin? You can buy through MetaMask, you can potentially buy through PancakeSwap through the buy feature. You can buy directly through Trust Wallet. All of those are going to be pretty expensive. I suggest using a centralized exchange, probably like Binance, in order to get much lower trading fees. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm going to copy my wallet address, which is this right here. So I'm going to copy this, go over to my Binance account. I've bought some BNB here and I'm going to withdraw it. If you want to know how to use Binance or other exchanges to buy crypto, uh, I'll leave those videos down below as well. The address right here. So I'm withdrawing crypto. I've already bought some BNB. I'm going to paste my address in here. This is my uh, address of my MetaMask wallet that I'm linking up to PancakeSwap. Which network do I want to use? I know that I'm using the BNB Smart Chain. So this is it right here. BNB Smart Chain. I'm going to click this. And it says, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. How much do I want to send out? I'm just going to send out, you know, whatever amount. So I'm sending BNB coin because that's the gas coin on the network I want to use. Here's my address to my wallet that I'm using with PancakeSwap and the amount that I want to send out. I'm going to click withdraw there. That's going to withdraw it to my MetaMask account and then I can go ahead and trade. The gas coin is now in my wallet, so I can go ahead and use that to pay for gas. I can also use the value of that coin to trade for any other coin. So from here, we're gonna to go to trade and then swap. Now you can see this is the interface. This is just a chart of the currency pair that you're trading. So if we go down here, which currency pair am I trading? I'm trading BNB coin because I have some of that. So this is the coin that you have that you're selling. This is the coin that we're trading into. Which coin do I wanna trade into? I'm just gonna trade into some uh, Tether right here, which is a stable coin. So I'm gonna click that, and then we're trading into this right here. We can see over the past month, this is you know the chart of them. So BNB has gone up in value a little bit over the last month versus uh, dollars. So you can see that here, this is the exchange rate. So for every uh, one BNB, it costs $246. So if you have one BNB and sell that, that's how much you would get uh, on PancakeSwap. So from right here, we have to know how to search for tokens. Because if we click this, you can see there's a list here. So some of the main coins are up here that you might want to trade that are popular on PancakeSwap. But then there's a massive list of all of these. And what are they? And how do you know that they're the right tokens that you want to trade? Well, what we can do is actually search for the token address of the token that we want to trade if we want to be super sure that we're trading the right token. Because this is a decentralized exchange. Basically, if a token exists on a chain, you can trade it, no matter if it's real or a scam. So you have to make sure that you're trading the real token. We can do that by going over to a token registry or directory. Uh, like this, which is CoinGecko. So I'll link these below as well. What we want to do is make sure that we're trading the right token. So find the token that you want to trade, no matter what blockchain it's on. I'll just show you with Tether as an example here. Now from here, you go to info and you can search for the contract address. So I'm going to click this down. And what I want to go and find is the contract address on the chain that I want to use, which is BNB Smart Chain. So I'm going to click this to copy the contract address, which is this one, uh, 0x55, right? So click this. Now I know that I'm on BNB Smart Chain and the asset that I'm trading is Tether. I'm going to go back to the exchange. I'm just going to paste in the contract address right here and it's found it right here. You can see this is USDT via CoinGecko. It's active. I know this is the right one. CoinGecko is you know, trustworthy, so they're not going to muck me around. So I can click this and now I know for sure that I'm trading the right token that I want to trade and it's not a scam. Now what we can also do if we're looking at tokens to trade is go over to something like Gecko Terminal. Um, again, this is an advert for CoinGecko. They just have the, you know, the, the platforms here. This is all uh, decentralized exchanges, all of the data for them. So you can see all of these EVM chains right here. And if you just click on one, so we'll click on like base, you can see all of the uh, highly traded coins. So this is what people are trading. I know when new coins are released or meme coins or whatever, there may be lots of scams or you know fake tokens. You can see the most traded 
uh, tokens right here. If we click on BNB chain, you can see that here, USDT versus BNB. You have some other coins here, right? So these are what's trading. You can see how much is trading, trade volume and everything right here. If you click into the trading pair, down here, you can get the contract addresses uh, for them. So this shows you the trade, shows you all of the trades in terms of size. Down here, you can see the contract addresses. This is the contract address of Tether. This is the contract address of the other coin, right? And so this is the pool address. You can see here 0x55. That's the same as we got from CoinGecko, right? So what you can do is just copy the address, go back to the um, platform and paste in the address. And you're going to find any token just like that. Once we have the two tokens that we want to trade, we can now go ahead with a trade. So I'm gonna use BNB because I'm paying gas with this. I can also use the value to trade into another token. So we're going to go to settings first, which is up here and click that. And then it's gonna take us through to this. So you have swaps and liquidity, default transaction speed. What do you wanna do here? I would just do default to be honest. It doesn't matter on most of these chains because these are pretty quick chains. So you don't need to kind of pay more gas to have it instantly. I would say default or standard is absolutely fine. Uh, in terms of slippage tolerance, what is slippage? Slippage is the difference between the price quote that you're given here when it shows you that price and the actual price that you trade at. Because this is a decentralized exchange, and because prices may not be instant, they change all of the time and your trade size may affect the trade. And so there may be a slight difference between the quote that you're given and the actual price that you trade at. For large tokens that have a lot of liquidity, uh, just go to 0.1 or 0.5%. You're going to be fine there. If you're trading very small tokens and especially if you're trading larger amounts, you might have to up the slippage tolerance because you might move the price by more than 1%. If that happens, and you let's say you have a slippage tolerance of 0.5 and the slippage is actually gonna be 1%, your trade will fail because your tolerance is below what it actually is gonna be. And so you're going to cancel out of that trade. You may have to still pay a gas fee, but you won't trade. So I'm just gonna do 0.5, that's fine for me. This is not gonna be high slippage. Um, then flippy sounds, turn those off. Expert mode, as you can see here, bypasses confirmations, uh, use at your own risk. I'm gonna leave that off as well because I wanna read the confirmations to make sure that nothing crazy is happening. So I'm just gonna click that off right here and then we can go ahead and trade. So let's trade an amount. So we can see that right here. I'm trading an amount of BNB and it says for this amount, it's quoting me that I'm gonna get $3.30 the price right here. Now, if you're brand new to PancakeSwap and you're using a, a wallet, you may have to sign and accept these assets because what you have to do is make sure that you give your wallet or, or the DEX permission to use the assets in your wallet first. If you don't have any of those permissions given to PancakeSwap, it's gonna ask you, hey, can we uh, sign transactions for this asset. Do you allow us to do this? So if it does that for you, you have to sign the transaction and say, accept the asset. You may have to pay a gas fee there as well. So I'm gonna press swap like this. And it says, this is the swap. I'm gonna confirm swap like this. It goes over to my wallet and it says, this is the swap right here, $3.30 on PancakeSwap. The gas you're gonna pay is 15 cents. And this is the total amount plus gas. I'm gonna press confirm and that's gonna go through. Like I said, if you haven't accepted these assets on PancakeSwap before, that's gone through already, then you may have to sign those assets in. So it says, you can't swap yet. You need to sign USDT and give us permission to trade it. Do you wanna give us, give us permission? You say yes. Once all that's done, then you can go ahead and trade. So that is it. That has taken place. You can view the transaction receipt on the uh, the blockchain scanner if you want. So it shows all of the details, um, but that's fine. If you don't have the asset added to your MetaMask yet, just click this one. That's gonna add the uh, asset right into your wallet. I have it already. What I mean by that is if you get your MetaMask up, you'll see with tokens down here, you'll see these tokens. Sometimes MetaMask doesn't add the token and you think, wait a minute, you know, I've swapped, but I can't see it. Just add the token to your MetaMask right here and that's gonna be fine. If it doesn't show you that, go down to the bottom and then click import tokens and then get the contract address. You can go over, get the contract address from CoinGecko again, add that token manually to your MetaMask and then you'll be able to see your balance.
One more extremely important thing to do if you're trading on DEXs and using wallets is to look at what permissions that you've given these exchanges. So every time that you use a wallet and you give a, an exchange or any other DAP permission to trade your assets, you are giving it permission to do loads of stuff. And those permissions don't disappear. What that means is if you ever sign something like a scam or a phishing attempt in your wallet, you may sign the ability to drain your wallet. And so what you have to do is make sure you know all of your approvals, what they are and who they're given to. So what you can do is come to a site like revoke.cash. Again, I'll leave all links down in the description to PancakeSwap, Binance, uh, Revoke, all the others. These are all of the permissions that I have given dApps for this particular wallet. This is just a tutorial wallet. So you can see that here. What you can see is that Tether has been given permission by my wallet to trade to PancakeSwap. So I didn't have to sign in the, uh, the asset itself. I have given PancakeSwap unlimited permission, which means if I have a billion dollars of USDT here, PancakeSwap has the permission to trade a billion dollars in one go. You can see that the amount of assets I've got is $3.28. This is essentially the amount, if I signed a transaction with the wallet that was a scam or a phishing attempt, then that thing could drain my entire wallet of USDT in one go. So if you want to change this, you can go to a website like revoke.cash, there's some other uh, others there. You can press edit and you can update the amount that you are willing for this app to have permission to trade. You can also completely revoke the permission. So go over to the right hand side, click revoke. It is a blockchain transaction, so you have to pay a small fee here as well, but you revoke the permission entirely, which means this dApp does not have permission to trade this asset for you in the future. I'll link all of the resources in this video down in the description below. I'm James of MindyG, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.